in this age in which organ transplantation has become so commonplace it's fairly important to know at least a little bit about immunosuppressants i won't claim that this is the highest yield farm section in the book but you'll definitely see questions on these drugs here and there this classic immunosuppressant blocks the differentiation and activation of T cells by inhibiting calcineurin, a molecule integral to the production of IL-2 and its receptor. More specifically, cyclosporin exerts its action through the binding of cyclophilins. Like other immunosuppressants, this medication renders the patient more susceptible to certain disease states. In this case, the recipient is more prone to viral infections and lymphoma due to the suppression of T cell activation and surveillance that normally defends the body. This is another immunosuppressant medication that acts to inhibit T cells. Recall from our discussion of transplant rejection that chronic rejection is mediated by T cells. Tacrolimus binds FK binding proteins, thus inhibiting the secretion of cytokines, mainly IL-2. While tacrolimus is widely used as both an induction and maintenance agent in transplant recipients, ironically it has the potential to exert significant toxicity on the very organs it seeks to protect. In particular, tacrolimus can be quite nephrotoxic, which is why monitoring of tacrolimus levels is important. Peripheral neuropathy is another not uncommon side effect of this drug. Sirolimus, better known as rapamycin, inhibits T cell proliferation in response to IL-2 by binding mTOR and is classically used in combination with other immunosuppressant agents such as cyclosporin and corticosteroids. Watch out for hyperlipidemia, thrombocytopenia, and leukopenia. This immunosuppressant is a monoclonal antibody to the IL-2 receptor on activated T cells. Notice how the names of monoclonal antibodies end in MAB for monoclonal antibody. Azathioprine exerts its effects through toxicity to proliferating lymphocytes. This medication is an anti-metabolite precursor of 6-mercaptopurine that interferes with the synthesis of nucleic acids. In addition to its uses in kidney transplantation, azathioprine is also of some utility in some autoimmune disorders. As with most of the other immunosuppressant medications, use of azathioprine is limited by its toxicity. Specifically, you often see bone marrow suppression. OKT3 is a monoclonal antibody that binds to CD3 on the surface of T cells. Can you think of why this exerts immunosuppressive effects? Recall from the section on signal transduction, both B cells and T cells require two receptor ligand interactions in order for activation to take place. Take a moment to look over this list of recombinant cytokines and their uses. I'll highlight a few of the more clinically relevant ones. IL-2 has been shown to be effective in metastatic melanoma, although mortality for this disease when not amenable to local control still remains devastatingly high. Erythropoietin is not uncommonly used to stimulate erythrocyte production. Its use is particularly common in chronic renal failure as well as in elderly patients. Filograstim and sargramostim are both granulocyte colony stimulating factors. They're used for the recovery of bone marrow after suppression in disease states. Alpha interferon is most commonly used in active hepatitis C infections, as well as hepatitis B. Beta interferon is the classic cytokine that has demonstrated some utility in treating multiple sclerosis. Gamma interferon has been used to treat chronic granulomatous disease, while interleukin-11 and thrombopoietin are used to treat thrombocytopenia. We've already mentioned various antibodies with clinical utility, and in the course of your studies and practice, myriad more will certainly come into use. Recall OKT3 and Diclizumab, monoclonal antibodies used to prevent acute transplant rejection. Remind yourself of their targets. Meromonab is an antibody to CD3 on the surfaces of T cells, while Diclizumab targets the IL-2 receptor. Infliximab and Adalimumab are monoclonal antibodies to TNF-alpha with utility against autoimmune conditions such as Crohn's disease, rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, and ankylosing spondylitis. Abstixumab is an antibody to glycoprotein 2B3A and is used to prevent platelet aggregation in conditions of cardiac ischemia and unstable angina. Trastuzumab, perhaps better known as Herceptin, has important use in breast cancer, targeting the ERB2 or HER2 receptor in cancers that overexpress HER2 nu. Less commonly on the boards, you may be asked about rituximab, which targets CD20 and is used in the case of B-cell non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. You may also be asked about omalizumab, which is an anti-IgE monoclonal antibody, which is used to treat severe asthma.